Hello fellow gamers and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Dan and today we're going to be going over a comprehensive guide on how to dominate the new meta. I'm sure you guys are still exploring the map, checking out all the changes, and are looking to get a head start. So we'll be covering a lot of new ways to gather loot, take fights, rotate around the map to help you guys get every advantage you can get. Fortnite Chapter 2 has been amazing so far, and from the looks of it, this meta is going to be a fun one. And with the new chapter, there are a lot of strategies, game mechanics, and meta changes we need to talk about. So let's get right into it. But before we get into it, if you are interested in getting better at Fortnite, then click the link below to go to ProGuides.com, where you can play with the best players in the world by just clicking a button. Sign up for our memberships at ProGuides and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support. We strive to bring you the best content available. Alright guys, with all that said, let's jump into the video. Okay guys, starting off with loadouts. So many things have been vaulted and the loot pool has become more streamlined. It's much smaller now and each weapon can be found as a common gray item all the way to a gold legendary. Even the RPGs! This simpler loot pool is closer to how things were in the early seasons way back in the day. Everything is pretty balanced, so there isn't too much you need to know about loadouts, but we can talk about a few changes that stand out, like with rifles. Should you run a burst rifle or a regular one? Well, the burst rifle isn't new or anything, but from our testing and from what other players have been noticing, the epic and legendary variants are very strong, for real. When we were going around using it, landing two or more shots per burst was the norm. It was shredding players, but the accuracy on the lower rarity burst rifles is nowhere near as good for some reason making them less enticing to run. As for the regular AR, that one hasn't seemed to change at all, which means it's still great to use and a fine fit with any loadout. Really, it comes down to preference, but if you see an epic or legendary burst rifle, don't pass it up just because it's a burst. Turns out they're much stronger than you probably remember. The pump shoddy also got a pretty big overhaul. Call it a nerf if you want, because that's sort of what it was. The common pump deals 70 damage per shot, with a 2 times headshot damage multiplier. With each rarity increase comes an extra 10 damage going all the way up to 110 with the legendary pump. So really, the old blue pump is now equivalent to the purple pump, and everything below purple is even worse than the green pump used to be. The tactical shotgun hasn't changed at all it seems, and with how bad the pump nerfs were, many are opting to use tack shotties instead. We're talking a faster fire rate, higher headshot multiplier, and more shots before you need to reload when compared to the pump. So which should you run? In our opinion, anything below the blue pump isn't worth taking over a tack shotty if you have the option. A blue one can be worth it, but it's not definitively better. If you find a purple or gold pump, then you should always carry that. These do over 100 damage and have that one shot potential we all love the pump for. Maybe the lower rarities will get buffed one day, and we hope so. The damage gap between these rarities is too high and it makes the lower ones just not worth running. The RPG also got a similar treatment to the pump. The gray one does 70 damage to players, ramping up all the way to 130 damage with the gold one. Not only does the damage increase, but the reload time increases as well. A gray RPG has almost double the reload time compared to a gold one. However, you shouldn't sleep on the gray RPG just because its stats are much worse. These are RPGs we're talking about. They've always been powerful and are a huge deciding factor in build battles. Plus, you can always upgrade it, which we'll talk about soon. Finally, I want to mention the bandage bazooka. A lot of players have been wondering how this works. Basically, it shoots bandages at your teammates, healing them instantly for 15 HP up to 100 health. It's got 5 charges, with a charge replenishing every 20 seconds. You can also heal yourself with it, simply by aiming it at your feet. The kicker with this thing though is that it takes up to 2 item slots. Whether or not you should run it, well, that's debatable. We would never recommend running it in solos or duos, it just doesn't give enough value to take up 2 item slots there. In squads though, you can definitely get some use out of it. But even in that mode, it takes a lot of bandages to reach the point where it was worth running. Because those 2 slots could always be used for plenty of other heals like med kits or shield potions. This thing is also really loud. You're just giving away your position every time you use it. It's like announcing, hey everyone, my team is weak and we're healing up over here. Like, do you want to get pushed when you're trying to recover? Because that loud boom noise is going to do it for you. Overall, the weapon loadout meta hasn't changed too much. It's still the normal 2-3 to three weapons and utility to fill the rest. But now, tack shotguns have more value and the new burst rifles are better than most players think. Also located around the map in major zones are upgrade benches. These things can take any weapon and upgrade it to a higher rarity, all the way up to gold. 
However, the materials you need to spend on each upgrade go up significantly with each rarity. It starts at 50 of each for gray to green, then 150 of each for green to blue, 250 of each for blue to purple, and finally 350 of each for the last upgrade to gold. Honestly, who has that many materials just laying around to use? Well, I know for myself, I definitely do not. So these things just don't see much use beyond the first two more affordable upgrades. We all know how ridiculously crucial it is to have material, so unless you get zone favored and have maybe a few extra minutes to farm up, it's not really worth it to upgrade your weapons to those higher tiers. First upgrade, that's fine. It only takes 150 mats in total. The second one, 450 total. Still manageable, but giving up over 750 materials for a small stats boost on one of your weapons, that's a trade most players shouldn't be taking. So unless you're playing squads and your team has a ton of mats to work with, you're usually better off holding on to them than making those big upgrades. Really, it's a matter of getting zone favor and how much time you have to farm for the upgrades. In most cases, you don't have the time or mats for anything other than the first couple of upgrades unless you're trying to throw all your materials away. If you are going to upgrade a weapon, prioritize upgrading the pump or RPG. Like we said earlier, these weapons see a huge stats boost with each rarity upgrade more than others. So in terms of pure value, you get the most by upgrading those bad boys. With all the rivers, ponds, and lakes on the new map, these water-based mechanics end up playing a huge role in each and every match. Our characters must have taken a crash course in swimming during the blackout because, what do you know, they can swim now. Just hop into any deep body of water and press jump. You'll do a dive and brush stroke forward. If you press jump when your character kicks their feet, you can maintain some really solid movement speed. This mechanic is a blast to use, and it can end up being really helpful as well. In terms of rotation speed, you usually go much faster swimming than you do running, unless it's against a river's current. That'll slow you down, pretty much to the point where it's better to get out and run. Swimming is kind of a big risk though. Should you get attacked while swimming, you won't be able to build cover if the water's too deep. You can always stop and shoot back, but the favor is already against you at that point. So we'd recommend swimming only in shallow rivers or next to some land. That way you can have a spot to hop out and build cover should you get attacked. The new motorboats are also pretty fun to use as well. They're great for early and mid-game rotations, and you can find them near most docks or bodies of water. You can get some serious speed with these things, even on land. The driver can also fire a missile every few seconds, which travels straight and hits for 450 damage to structures and 35 to players. The damage to players is negligible, but against structures, it's almost enough to one-shot fully built metal. The big problem with these motorboats, though, is how vulnerable you are while riding them. The missile the driver can fire is nowhere near good enough defense if you're riding solo. Even with passengers, you're all just sitting ducks on the boat. All it takes is some opponents with decent tracking aim and bodies will start dropping. There are some techniques you can use, like swapping seats to throw off your opponent's aim, but even with that, you're still pretty vulnerable to enemy fire. So just like with swimming, you should try to drive your boat near some land just in case you need to hop out and start building, because boats are still worth using despite how unprotected you become riding them. It's one of the only mobility options we have so far this season, and riding one is a much better alternative than taking storm damage. Lastly, let's talk about the new fishing mechanic. From what we've seen so far, fishing is a fantastic method for gathering loot and healing items. Mostly heal items though. There are three types of fish you can gather, and two of them are really excellent. There's the small fry, which heals for 25 HP up to the 75 health mark. These aren't the best, but are still decent to hold if you can get a stack of them. Then there's the flopper, which heals for 50 health up to the 100 HP mark. And the rarest fish is the slurp fish, which heals for 50 health or shield all the way up to max HP. What's great about these fish is how quickly you can eat them. It's a short one second cast and you get the health instantly. You can stack six small fries, four floppers, and three slurp fishes. All around, they're the best healing items you can get for use in combat or other sticky situations. With how common the fishing rod is, you can pretty much always find one. They spawn naturally around docks and other bodies of water and also drop out of chests frequently. Anytime you've got zone favor and need some healing items, consider farming for some fish. Getting a stack of four floppers or a couple of slurp fishes isn't too difficult. It only takes a minute or two. Just make sure you're casting in the schools of fish when you can. There are those small bubbly spots located randomly throughout the water. If you prioritize casting in those, they'll greatly increase your chances of finding good fish. You are, of course, pretty vulnerable while fishing, so don't hesitate to make a small one by one, edit a wall or a window, and cast your rod through that. You'll keep yourself much safer from potential flanks if you do that. Lastly, let's talk about the new hiding mechanic. There are haystacks and open lid dumpsters located all around the new map we can now hide in. And surprisingly, a whole squad can fit together inside a single one. Just take a look at Chap and his squad here. All of them are hiding in this little haystack. Using the supply drop as bait, they wait for an opponent to come by, jump out together, and get a free limb. Poor guy. 
There are a couple of problems with this strat. First, there's a small delay after jumping where you can't shoot or build. The delay is just enough that most opponents can react with their own shot or by building cover, so it's not the most effective move unless you've got multiple players jumping out. Not only that, but the haystacks and dumpsters rustle and make noise, indicating somebody is inside. If someone happens to notice that, your cover is blown. Since there are usually other things you should be doing, like farming materials, gathering loot, or rotating, this new hiding mechanic is going to be pretty situational. We'll predict it'll mostly be used for cheeky early game kills. If you can set up a distraction, like maybe a small pile of loot for instance, it might be enough of a distraction for you to jump out and get the first shot off. But otherwise, we think those drawbacks will keep it from being an effective strat. Chapter 2 just got released, so players are still discovering new things every day. But from what we know so far, pump shotguns just aren't as good as they used to be, and burst rifles are really strong if you can find a purple or legendary version. Upgrading your weapons at the new benches can be worth it, but most of the time you won't be able to upgrade to the highest tiers. It takes way too many mats that you'll probably end up needing later in the match. While swimming and riding motorboats are useful for rotating, you really need to be careful while doing either. You're very susceptible to gunfire in the water or while on the boat. To help alleviate that, stay as close to land as possible so you have an exit should you need it. As for hiding in dumpsters and haystacks, the more teammates you have to jump out with you, the better. And always try to wait for your opponent to turn their back before jumping out, or else you'll give them an opportunity to shoot first. Thanks so much for watching guys, be sure to like the video if it helped you out, we'll be coming out with more Chapter 2 content in the coming days, so be sure to subscribe and get those videos as soon as they drop. See you guys later.